Guys, welcome to TFL Now live show, which is an opportunity for us to be with you and answer your comments, questions, show you some really interesting vehicles. That's right. And for those of you who absolutely were dying to get more electric vehicles and say that more people want them, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I really wanted to do this show also because we finally got our hands on the new F-150 Lightning Pro which has a sticker price of under $46,000, at least this one. Yes, which is technically last year's model. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I'm, I'm also monitoring the show. So oh, okay. let, me, let, me, let me turn so this off. Yeah, he's going to do that. While he does that, we actually have a nickname for this truck. It is the Pro, but it's a white lightning, hence. It's white lightning. <laughs> yeah. Is it greased, though? No. Greased lightning? No, no. Andre, you let white lightning. The Oh, you just lost the whole thing. All the audience is mad now. Sorry, guys. Anyway, th this is this is a pro model, um, and I, I was lucky enough to actually go to the one of the events for the pro. And unlike the ridiculously overpriced Lightning that we bought, well, it's not the we, highest priced Lightning. Oh, no, no, but it, it was eighty-eight thousand dollars. Eighty-one. Oh, I'm sorry, eighty-one thousand dollars. This is almost half the price, and in my book, it's way worth it. Comparatively speaking. And so we are talking about a truck that has a smaller battery, but it still has all wheel drive or four wheel drive. It still has independent suspension and it has a majority of the components that that truck has. So we will be talking about that. Yeah. And I know we just published a video also on TFLEV where you and I road trip this. Yeah. Uh, because uh, we have to give thanks to Columbine Ford. Yeah. They're so great. So Columbine Ford, this is their, one of their demo vehicles. Uh -huh. uh, they're in Rifle, Colorado. They have several demo vehicles, including an e-transit as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but this wouldn't be possible without them because they lent it to us for several days or maybe even a couple of weeks. That's right. Uh, by the way, what we did was we took the e-transit van and we drove it from here to Rifle, Colorado, which is 200... Almost 200 miles. Yeah. yeah. And that was a bit of a challenge, but it was also highly revealing. And then we drove this back. And in that video, you're going to see... What we do with a vehicle that has a rather limited mileage on a trip that, technically speaking, should have required us to charge it. And it did better than I expected. Yeah, and you can watch that video. But uh, as we talk about this, we'll talk about how efficient this actually was. Right. Uh, because it's lighter. So here's what blew my mind. And I know uh, the skeptics out there will say manufacturers never build or sell base models. They want you to buy something more expensive. Well, of course they do. They make a lot more money that way. Yeah, I, I mean, it's true across the board, but you can find these jams once in a while. And, yeah. and, and we found it. I just went on Ford.com and I priced, I started configuring an F-150 regular one. Crew cab, like this one. So let's walk, let's walk around a little bit. By the way, we're still charging this puppy. Uh, we can talk about charging speeds and the experience here in a second. Uh, but you can, I was configuring a crew cab, short box, which is a five and a half foot bed, Regular F-150 with a 3.3 liter base V6, uh -huh. non-turbo, four-wheel drive with a towing package like this one has. Yeah. 47,000. Really? Yes. And it didn't have the un pro, pro power on board. It didn't have, you know, like the LED lights. It didn't have many features that this truck has. So ultimately, if you can find one of these, and I know, the, you know, the next model year is going to be more expensive, of course. Mm -hmm. This is a one heck of a deal. It is because what this vehicle comes with, it's more than just the base model. Uh, among other things, it actually has the uh, Pro Step or Steppy Pro. What do we call uh, that? Tailgatey Steppy. Tailgatey Steppy. But. <laughs> Which is not okay, assisted, so, and I'm but, completely but, okay with but that. But that's okay. I mean, we've had these tailgates for decades. Yeah. We, we can do this ourselves, right? Yeah. And, uh, it's, but you, you have that as well, and that is really helpful. You may notice, though, that the, um, this area here, it doesn't have spray and bed liner. Yeah, so that's about 600 bucks. I was going to say it's like four to 600 bucks. Right? Yeah, so 600 bucks. Uh, you can have Ford do it. You can do it at your local you know, bed liner shop, uh -huh. uh, whatever you want. Uh, but uh, camera dude, uh, if you walk around, there's that pro power on board system. So this truck, even being a base vehicle, uh -huh. still has it. Your arms are longer than mine. You there we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. But, but that's, uh, that's an artifact of all trucks. They're right. taller. 
Well, th- they are, unless you get a smaller truck and you're smart. So another thing this has, I actually really like this, and I wish other um, truck builders would do this. They integrated what are essentially rulers that go mm-hmm. alongside here. And I really like that because I've used a variety of pickup trucks and SUVs as workstations because my wife has taken over the garage. And so I can actually have space to do some work. And I really like this. This is just a fantastic idea. I, I thought you were going to say when you went fishing, you, you, you got one that big. that big. You know, it's a funny thing. Um, I actually have a knife and I use that to measure fish because I know roughly that's legal thing. But it, th- that's a whole different story. Anyway, the point is, is that I really do like that. It's a smart little utility thing. I'm not a big fan of this step, to be honest with you. Um, I do prefer... Um, General Motors having the little integrated step in the bumper. I think uh, Hyundai uses it as well. Yes. And we may see it being used in other vehicles in the future. But one of the things I wanted to point out, probably the only negative, is this. For some of you guys out there, you may notice. First of all, no window. Right. No sliding window. But also no defroster. Yeah. Doesn't that make you think? Hmm. Now, there are a lot of really inexpensive vehicles out there that can standard with rear defrost, and Ford decided not to do this. And I don't really consider this as price cutting. I think this is a penalty. You didn't buy the expensive truck. Here's your penalty. And there's another one, too. And you can kind of tell from the outside, but it's kind of hard to see. But there's no uh, Sirius XM antenna. There's no satellite antenna up there. Or at least it's not turned on. It's not up there. Well, what about these guys? They have, they have Wi-Fi, and the other one is satellite. Oh, so, is the other one satellite? Uh, oh, okay, I, I think so. Oh, okay. I, I well, think anyway, so. the point is, is that it's not turned on. So when you buy this truck, you don't get satellite. Now, he, here's an important point. If you buy a base model Mitsubishi Mirage, you get standard satellite. So once again, I think it's a penalty, not price cutting. That's me. So let's talk about... I'm, I'm, I, I saw some you of your listen? comments. First of all, uh, I think Andrew said, where's the Bronco pickup truck? Well, I don't think they're going to make it um, because the Maverick is there. The Ranger is there. Yeah. The Ranger is going to be almost a Bronco. Yeah, we're expecting a Ranger Raptor at some point yes. in time. Uh, but I want to talk about some of the other negatives with this. With okay. These, with these trucks, right? So this is a smaller battery. Uh-huh. This is a larger battary. Right. Right. Uh, Ford says 230 mile range. Ford says about 320 miles of range, right? By itself, that's already, for traditional pickup drivers, that already sounds low, Yeah. right? Then on top of that, of course, the charging will take time. Mm -hmm. But dude, on our road trip, we got 2.8 miles per kilowatt hour. So you can even translate that. That's going up and down the mountain, Mm -hmm. which translates to about 268 or 270 miles of range. Right. On the highway, this is not city. So keep in mind, what happened was, when we started off, we had 100% charge. Not everybody does that, um, but 100% charge. We took off from Rifle, which is fairly flat, and we gradually went uphill, and then we had to go up and over the Rocky Mountains. And we, I, I thought that that would completely kill the range, and sure enough, by the time we got to Eisenhower Tunnel, we were about 50% or less, and then everything else was downhill. And the regenerative braking on this vehicle uh, the amount of power that went back into the battery blew my mind. And that is what gave us that extra range. If you were driving flat on a highway, cross country, you would not get that range. Am I correct? Uh, I totally interrupted you. I was looking at the comments. <laughs> okay. But, but usually highway driving is bad for electric vehicles. Yeah, electric vehicles don't well, like highway driving. Well, because obviously this is a truck. Right. Bad aerodynamics in general. Right. Uh, a sedan would be much better, of right. course. That's uh, these vehicles love city. Well, because the regenerative braking once yeah, again, yeah, putting exactly. power back into the battery. So driving cross country tends to be the worst thing that you can do to an electric vehicle. As such, I didn't expect to do as well. But because we went over the Rockies and went downhill on the other side, that is where that extra range really And it did in. help. Yeah. yeah, it did. So, and that's the other thing about electric versus um, internal combustion, right? Do I, do I have to keep holding this? No, no, no I just gave it to like, you like because I... Because I thought you would enjoy looking at this. I, I really don't like enjoying. Well, this is this is the uh, MSRP. Right, that's an MSRP that is no longer available, though. Keep in mind, this is last year's truck. It has gone up in price. Yeah, that's unfortunate. It's, gosh, I know it's part of it is demand, right? Yeah. High demand. A lot of people are looking at these trucks, but also some cost of raw materials, right? 
that's what Ford said was one of the causes, among the major causes for this. Yeah, yeah, that's what I heard as well. But, uh, I mean, you can read between the lines if you want to and see if there's any greed involved. There might be. The important point is that still the pro is the way, in my mind, to go. Now, look, see that screen right there? It is not as big as the one that's on our Lightning, right? But do you need a huge screen? Exactly. You really don't. Um, yeah, it does have vinyl seats. Here, um, here, yeah, so here's what you get with a base truck, right? Yeah. And you've probably have seen this on an XL model F-150 already. Exactly. Vinyl seat. Let me get some light. Or oh. poor man's leather. <laughs> vinyl floor. Wash it out. Wipe it out. Yeah, exactly. Uh, lots of um, hard plastic, right? Uh, but really, and plastic steering wheel. Um, but really, I mean... That's how the way trucks used to be for decades. You know, very simple. You know, not a lot. You know, no heated seats, but a heated mirror, blind spot monitoring. You could see that mm -hmm. LED headlights. This was my pet peeve forever. Work trucks have poor lighting, right? Yeah. Poor headlights. You you get penalized because God forbid you be a working guy. Right? <laughs> but this one doesn't penalize you for that. No, it doesn't. Um, I Take actually like the light setup on this vehicle. Oh, you wanted to show it sweep. Ah. Uh, well, I don't know. It That's also, it. it does swivel. The when LEDs turn the wheel. do turn with wheels yeah. uh, when you're steering. So that part made it over to this, but there's something else that's really important. In terms of the driving experience, I didn't feel much of a difference between driving this $46,000 pickup versus driving this $81,000 pickup. Seriously, other than the comfort of the seats, yeah, I well, take a look. tell. Yeah, take a look at the interior right here. So now you have rich men's leather. Ventilated, cooled seats, uh, heated seats. Heated those are made out of cow, right? 15, 15 and a half inch vertical display. Right. Uh, but actually, the console is similar, mm -hmm. you know, with the shifter here and the folding uh, work surface here. Does that shifter collapse? This one does, and so does it in the other truck. So that one, this one does too? I believe so. So this is what's kind of flooring yeah. me, is because... It does. Right, there's a button to collapse it. Yep, it's flat right now. So, so this is what kind of floors me, is that a lot of features that are here are also on the inexpensive truck. Right, and that's kind of what my point is. This gives you everything you need and nothing you don't, right? You could drive this every day if you had, especially if you were like a local route, right? Um, or you're doing a local commute and you are paying so much less and you're getting everything that that thing can do. And am I right in saying that the towing is about the same and the payload in this is actually better? Yeah, so the towing is a big question, Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, we'll talk about charging in a second. This is, has a max tow package, which means additional cooling. Mm -hmm. I'm just monitoring your comments here as well. Additional cooling on the motors. This also has max towing package, additional cooling. Mm. Uh, 10,000 pounds of towing. 7,700 pounds of towing. Because this has the lesser, uh, the less, po less powerful motors. Well, yes, the power is less. 452 horsepower, 580 horsepower. Right. Still, by truck standards, those are huge numbers. There, those are huge numbers, but that's, in my mind, one of the reasons why, because there's no suspension difference. There's no, right, am I correct? Not, not really, not but a... huge payload. Uh, Case, right. can you show them the payload? Sorry oh, about the uh, sound. That's the worst part of this truck in my mind. Right there. 2,092 pounds. This is almost heavy duty. Sorry for the ding. I hate that ding. <laughs> I, I, I truly do. Um, we have a Ram 2500 Cummins uh -huh. standard output truck. Right. Uh, crew cab 4x4 with 2,200 pounds of payload. This is almost the same payload as that. Which is insane, especially considering the fact that this has a coil spring rear suspension. There's yeah. no solid rear axle. Yeah, let's going show across. that really quick. Also, 18s. I love the wheels, by the yes, way. Yes, the wheel and tire package on this is excellent. Let's show it from the back, <laughs> the rear suspension. Yeah, I really feel like this is the truck that the most people really should be buying if they're going to buy an electric truck from Ford. But, but once again, I want to address some of the comments, right? All right, all right. People yeah, say, yeah. this is not for everybody. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not for everybody. If you live in the middle of Canada or Montana or Idaho or even Colorado mm -hmm. and you yeah. have to drive long distance with trailers, this is probably not your truck. No, this is, this is just for the select type of person. So let's say somebody lives in a rural area and they have a relatively short distance to drive to work every day. This might make more sense. Or if you don't tow a lot and you don't tow a great distance, this might make sense. Really, in my mind, this is a great commuter truck for people who have to load and occasionally tow medium loads. 
short distances. And, and, and huge loads, too. Well, 2,000 pounds. 2,000 pounds, but um, that will affect your range. Uh, our friend Old Timer just donated $25 to wow, the live show. Wow, thank you so much. Old Timer, we haven't interacted with you on the live show recently. Thank you very much. He says, just checking in. We'll have to watch the replay later. Some of us have to work. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. At TFL, we never work. We work. <laughs> This is what we do. This is we're playing. This, this is it. This is playtime. Yeah. So, um, but I, I I do agree with you guys. I mean, look, I was in the market for a truck. I did buy something, and I needed something that had pretty decent mileage that actually had a good return. And for a minute, I thought about the Pro, but then knowing that my family likes to do camping in other states, that immediately took the Pro out of it. However, there is something to keep in mind. If you don't mind stopping at a charging place every 150 miles or so, plugging in and walking away for 20 minutes, maybe using the bathroom, you could, in theory, drive all the way across country or all the way to the top of Canada, well, hell, uh, Alaska. Which this is what this truck did. And that's exactly what this truck did. Yeah, Northern Lightning, you probably have seen this already. Um, uh, we, look at this. You see some of this? We've been washing this truck for the last month and a half, and Alaska is still here. Like some of this dust and mud and, and dirt is kind of everywhere. And yeah, w the entire team. Hello? Is this supposed to make that noise? No, maybe I didn't touch it correctly. <laughs> wow. Uh, so see the fancy versions, right? Um, um, automated elect electric tailgate. It will come up by itself. It's yeah. deadline. And all of that adds weight. The, these yes. seats, they're massaging oh. and, and cooled and blah, 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 right? Yeah. That adds a lot of weight. And the sunroof adds weight. Yeah. And all the features that this has. By the way, there's about 650 pounds between these two. That's pretty significant. A lot of it is the battery size because uh, this has almost, what, 35% more battery. Right. So the battery adds weight. Um, so that's actually a quick truck. And we have a drag race video where we drag these two side by side coming up on TFL truck just very shortly. And rumor has it that the guy behind the camera, Case, absolutely terrified everybody at the drag strip with his ability he, he did terrify yeah, people that's yeah <laughs> well he was flex he was also flexing his, uh, oh, well, then, then, then we get more viewers <laughs> thank you case <laughs> are there any questions uh questions so there's a somebody said that they also have a pro mm -hmm. a lightning pro so and they found one near 41 or 42 grand Basically, with no that, options. That's the, that's the bare bones version from 2022. So congratulations. You have just stole a pickup truck. Yeah, it's, it's a hell of a good deal because most of what this has, you already have. Right? Okay, okay, so there's another comment. Uh, and this is a huge, we see this all the time. What happens after the eight-year, 100,000-mile electric component warranty runs out? It's a really good question. Is this a throwaway truck? Are you going to be recycling it, throwing it away? Mm. How, we don't do, know. do you want me to answer it? Well, or, no, or? but I can, I can give you guys a perspective. Um, as battery technology advances, it seems to be that it becomes more and more reliable and more and more robust. Now, I have a vehicle that was built in 2016. I'm still driving it almost every day. What is it? It's a Nissan Leaf. Thank you. With, with the, and the Nissan Leaf technology that they had with their batteries was not the best. It does the job. And I still have about 90% of that battery. And in 10 years from now, I'm willing to bet that I'll probably have about 70% of that battery. It means shorter ranges, of course. And that's with older tech. Newer tech, I suppose, will be stronger and more robust over the years. Now, Ford has said, and I asked them directly when I was at the Pro event, that they feel that the battery life of the vehicle will match the lifetime, uh, the life of the truck, which means over 10 years. That's the and, and they usually talk about 150,000 miles mm -hmm. as a lifetime of a vehicle. That, that's, like, and it's, it's, it's greater for heavy duty vehicles, mm -hmm. right? Those are rated to about 250,000 miles or more. And, that, right? um, and of course, people drive these, I mean, current ones, way over 150,000 miles. Yep. So it's an important question. Battery replacement costs are, are high right now, right. but that they might come down. So we don't, we don't really know but what's going to happen. You know, and one thing that a lot of extremists on one side or the other are saying is, is like, you may never have to replace your battery. And that is true. Or you may have to replace your battery. And that is also possibly true. It depends on a lot of different things. For instance, living in cold climate, if these vehicles were outdoor vehicles being charged and run outdoors all the time, their battery life would drop a bit or in super hot climates. But if they were kept indoors, 
treated properly, the battery might last longer, lower degradation. There are a lot of things to keep in mind. And remember, we're at the genesis of battery tech. This is the first, this is their first electric pickup. This is the first yeah. mass produced. For Ford, yeah. Right, but, I mean, even though Rivian technically was first, in terms of production numbers, Ford's just been blowing these things out of the door. Yeah, they, I think they sold already like 4,000 of them over the last several months. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, they've, by comparison, they've been really getting them out there. So, um, I, I, I agree with you guys. It's a funny thing because as journalists, we're trying to look at both sides of it, right? We're trying to be practical and logical, but at the same time, we do look at the future and what's going to be happening. We know for a fact that a variety of different automakers are coming out with electric vehicles like these trucks. And the question is, of course, how does the battery tech fare for them? Because some of them are using the same battery builder, basically. I mean, they may call it something different, but it really, underneath it often, is the same one. So time will tell, but they are keeping this in mind. And there's something else that is never brought up. What about recycling these batteries? It's not as easy as you think. Right, and also reusing them. So uh, before we get there, uh, Altering Nation, hey guys. Uh, oh, Altering Nation, hey, what's up, bro? What up, dude? Uh, check out the channel, too. Uh -huh. uh, they have the Bronco Altering coverage. Altering Nation is great. Yeah. yeah, everything. So thank you for your donation. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, they say, what's up, big dogs? What's up, big dog? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate ooh, that. Ooh. <laughs> uh, and also, Taker610 says, um, donated two bucks. Thank you. 2025 will be the year to buy an electric truck. I, I think that's also a really, really great point. Yeah, I mean... Because competition the, will be Well, greater. the revolution will be out. The Ram revolution yes. should be out by then. Uh, Chevy will definitely have the Silverado. GMC will have something. And who knows, maybe Tesla will finally have their Cybertruck out by then. Also, uh, Toyota promised an electric pickup within the next couple of years. Yeah, they also promised an electric car, which they said, no soup for you, and they removed them from the dealerships because they had something falling off. Toyota usually doesn't make these types of mistakes, so that's why we're kind of jumping on it. But yeah, Toyota, and we're even expecting other automakers to come out with uh, electric trucks and electric SUVs. So totally, then. competition will be greater. Yeah, I agree. Prices should be more in control because, you know... Hopefully by then the chip thing will be completely resolved. They're, they're, everybody's building chip plants on their own, realizing, hmm, this might be a good idea. And also the supply chain hopefully will be handled well before then. Yeah. So yeah, the prices should hopefully be under control. And as they build more, that's also another way to bring the pricing down. So I have another example. Uh, we purchased, TFL had the BMW i3. Yeah, And then yours. I purchased it from the company, right? Uh -huh. And my wife's been driving the wheels off of it mm -hmm. because she has to commute 50 miles a day, every day. Right. And it has now 50,000 miles. And it's a 2014, so it's about six, uh, no, eight years old now. Yeah. Um, or more. And still, the battery performance is good. But once again, uh, kind of a low mileage, always garage, always well taken care of car. Right. So, and it's behaving, performing really, really well still. Yeah, and I'm not taking care of the Nissan at all that I'm driving, by the way. It sits outside all the time. I drive it through snow. My, my daughter beats the crap out of it. So that's exactly the opposite of that, but yet its battery performance has proven to be quite good so far. So we're not, set, we're not trying to sell you anything here because th there is a reality, and that is if you completely screw your battery, you are gonna be, in my book, at least 30% of the car's value in the battery minimum to replace it, uh, unless you do a used battery. And there's some companies now that are finally figuring that out. They're repairing batteries and selling them used. But what about what happens when these batteries croak and they have to be recycled? Well, there are some solutions that are starting to pick up speed, some of which is where they take them and they actually hook them up to the power grid. In some cases or homes or buildings mm -hmm. that's right so they have a second life usually after a vehicle life and we uh, i actually asked one of the rivian engineers about this right. and they told me this that there's a second life which is storage for buildings so if you have solar on top of your house or building or wind energy or something else you could actually store that energy on on site right and have that another be another 10 or 15 years of life Right. Uh, that's uh, well. I'm looking at that right now. It's yeah, that's why I was hoping for your house, right? Exactly. So I have solar. I Tesla solar. It's part of my house when I bought it, and I don't have a battery backup system. Not exactly yet. So one of the things that they'll do is some of these companies will repackage these things, and you plug them into your house, and essentially it works like a generator, and you can run your house essentially on um, between three and thirty kilowatt hours per day on your uh, system. Right. It depends. Uh, but if you have a blackout, 
Um, also, it also helps you store that energy so you can shove it out where you need to and take le less, if nothing, from the grid when necessary. So a lot of people are worried about brownouts and blackouts in certain states. Something like this can actually help take you off the grid so you can run your power all the time, so you can run your air conditioner or charge your car or whatever you need to do without having to worry about taking from the grid. Right? Yeah, and um, ex exactly agree. So Line Runner brings up an important point. Uh, energy costs and availability, right? right. So that's this kind of fits into our conversation. It does indeed. Um, national average, I was just looking at it up a couple of days ago, is 16 cents per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. And this is for home usage, right? Right. Um, and these prices vary by area, uh, by region and town and city. Right, sure, of course it is. San Diego, for example, somebody emailed me from San Diego and they said, what are you talking about? Our energy is like 35 cents a kilowatt hour. Or more sometimes uh, right. during certain uh, times. Yeah, that's true. And also the grid. So we're using energy from the office right now to charge this mm -hmm. truck, which could take uh, about, what, 10 hours to fully recharge. So overnight charging. Yeah, one of these. Yeah. Level two, um, especially like a pro. But that's off peak hours, which is good. Off peak hours, it was charging overnight here. So uh, hope, you know, so that's kind of a lower cost a way to do it. Mm -hmm. Or if you need to charge on the road trip, like we were saying, fast chargers but also they're not there's not a lot of them no there's and there yet. there's some issues with them sometimes they break down <laughs> which we've experienced several times yeah. but the good news is recently the federal government has put billions of dollars into adding to the infrastructure building a beefier grid and putting in more cross-country chargers i think one of the things that I'm, i had to wrestle with myself because i really hated the idea at first is that you use your house as your main gas station and in my case, now that I have the solar set up, I'm really not adding anything to my bill. In fact, my bill is pretty much zero in order to charge my kid's car and drive it around all the time. I would imagine bigger trucks like this would require a lot more juice. But nonetheless, if you think about that type of investment over time, how that would work for your vehicle, that can work out. But then there's the whole other thing about uh, driving... Let's say you're in the middle of Grand Junction and some of the areas around there are not great when it comes to charging and you're stuck getting, you know, 60, 70, 80 cents per kilowatt, you know, kilowatt hour. Oh, and some is. chargers uh, uh, charge you per minute. Per minute, right. Well, Which well, doesn't, help, doesn't help vehicles that are slow charging. Yes. It kind of penalizes you. Yeah, and some uh, vehicles charge extremely slow. Yeah. So there's another donation from Taker610. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you. Um, and he's asking, do you guys know if GM patented the Midgate? I think he's referring to the new Silverado EV truck. That's a really good question. With a, yeah. Kind of like an avalanche like Which is solution. an option, by the way. It's not standard on the truck, which I thought was crazy. So it's kind of like the return of the avalanche, if you recall the Midgate being able to be dropped. But if you get the base model uh, Silverado EV, it doesn't have it. It has just a regular, well, basically a bed like this, which I didn't expect. Yeah, and, and I don't question. know exactly what they patented. It's very complex. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I do know that it's now um, uh, like a 60-40 split. Mm -hmm. So the tailgate, uh, the midgate, where the, basically the bulkhead of the bed folds down and you can fold either part of it or both parts, mm -hmm. right? And also the glass is taking up. So you can actually put something big, big objects well, in there. Well, just, just like the avalanche in that respect. Yeah, so uh, they're kind of adding to that, you know, a little bit more functionality yeah, as well. Yeah, the 60-40 split. Um, right? And then... So yeah, I, I'm not sure, but there are other people like Bollinger. <laughs> you know, what's funny? Gone. you know what's funny with Bollinger? Mm. So they said the B1 and the B2 trucks, which were these macho boxy concepts that they had, right? Electric vehicles. They said no more commercial trucks, and then they got purchased by another company and said we're back. That's did right. you see that? Yeah, well, of course they did. They want to. They want to start reselling the B1 and B. I mean, producing them again. I mean. They haven't delivered anything. They have a financial backer who bought them, essentially, and now they have some money to actually build these trucks. They have a mid-gate as well. Yes, they do, yes. Which, but it goes all the way through the yes, vehicle. Yes, and that's just a mid-gate gate, and it goes all the way into the front, which is they patented that feature where it also goes all the way into the front. So in other words, you can fold vehicle. down all the seats except for the driver's seat and put in something extraordinarily long. Telephone like a, poles. Like, like, yeah, basically. Yes. And put, you know, not that you'd be hauling telephone poles often, but you never know. But on your ranch, a tumbleweed ranch, sometimes we haul po telephone poles. <laughs> that, that's why we... Coming up, video coming up very soon. Okay. Um, uh, Kate, 
Kaylin Taylor donated five dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And and um, they say appreciate your you guys. Thank you. Very, we appreciate very, you. Thank you guys for supporting us. We yeah, really do appreciate it. This is it. huge. Uh, obviously, we're not requiring you to support us. No, but, but this is really special. It, it helps. Andre needs a new haircut every two weeks. And well, in order to make that. Sometimes I forget. <laughs> yeah, so do I. Um, anyway, but thank you guys, seriously, for your, it, it really does help us. So what, uh, any uh, more questions before we uh, start wrapping it up? Yeah, so there's a couple of questions. Um, I mean, comments like uh, a CDN user says that Canadian power companies are taking old car batteries and using them as backup power to right. support the grid. They're also developing SMR small modular reactors. Yes, yes, they are. And the small modular reactors are really cool because in some cases, essentially what you're doing is you're taking the tech that we're using for uh, hydrogen and you're enlarging it and using it for a full a fill station, I should say. And I've seen these things, prototypes of them, basically a large, think of a large cube that has places where you can plug in your car or truck and you put it out anywhere you need to put it, fire this thing up. Essentially, it's only byproduct is water and it is creating electricity for a certain period of time, a lot of it. And you plug in and go, and then when that thing is depleted, they basically come along eventually, pluck it out and put it in another one. And these things are remarkably efficient. They have a big solar panel on the roof, and they can sit there for a long time and fuel or charge several vehicles. So it's a really cool idea, and I have a feeling we'll be seeing that in rural areas soon. Yeah, and I think we need to wrap up a little bit, yeah. but, but I want to end here. So let's step back. And I want to mention a couple more things. Yes, please. So Ford and some others are having solutions where this is bidirectional, right? Right. So I'm charging, and not this cable is not bidirectional because we don't have the start uh, Ford Station Pro. I'm curious too. Uh, but um, thank you. Um, <laughs> but that's another way to support the grid. Yes, it where is. Where the vehicle can actually help your house or building. So essentially reversing the power that the vehicle had, it can put it back into your house or even your building and help the grid out in times of need. And they're already starting to work on programs like that, like real yeah. programs. Uh, so that's one thing. And also, um, there's other solutions right now. You know, hybrids are available or becoming more popular even in pickups. Yeah. Um, I hope... I hope there's more manufacturers that jump on that. I hope so. I, I still am dumbfounded by the fact that there aren't that many, frankly, any other hybrid and pickup trucks. Plug-in hybrid pickup trucks make a lot of sense to me now that the tech is really solid and we know it works. And it's like everybody jumped past that right to electric trucks. Mm -hmm. And that makes no sense to me. And, and also, like, GM is heavily invested in diesel. So the 3-liter Duramax LZ0 engine is coming out, uh, you know, really imminently this year mm -hmm. on sale. They upgraded it, they made it more powerful, more efficient. Uh, so there's multiple technologies that are still advancing in this space. So I, I'm really hopeful. Yeah, yeah. No matter what, big changes are coming in terms of electrification. It's of course a question of whether or not we're going to be able to um, look at it and say, oh, okay, instead of having all our eggs in one basket, we're gonna spread it out a little bit and make it work throughout. I, that's what I'm kind of hoping we're gonna do. And I didn't know you were gonna open it. <laughs> I, I wanted to scare you. No, that's all right, I just didn't wanna. Anyway, it. so, hey, still a power frunk, even in a simple one. Yes, yes, and it still has. The outlets here. Right. So there you have it, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate your comments and, and support, and we read basically all of them, yeah. at, at least in the first day. <laughs> <laughs> As, you know, we make a lot of videos. So when you guys, uh, when this turns into a regular video, of course, we will be reading a few more of those comments and try to answer a few of those questions as well if you didn't get a chance during the broadcast. Yeah, but I think, um, and Ford, please, uh, if you're watching too, have more of these trucks available for people. I, I think people really appreciate simple vehicles with great lighting and great features like this that are usable. For uh, a reasonable price. Yeah, for a reasonable price. We, all of us cannot really afford $80,000, a $100,000 vehicles. Hell, the $40,000 vehicles is a lot for some. But the bottom line is this, that uh, we do expect prices to come down across the board in the near future, not just with Ford, but pretty much everybody else who's starting to build electric pickups and regular SUVs and all this other stuff. All right, thank you for watching, and we'll see you uh, once again, oldtfl.com, and uh, also podcasts, uh, which we do. <laughs> That's right, guys. So we'll see you later. Have a great week. See ya.